If you're looking for a powerful tiny desktop PC, this video is for you because here I have Lenovo ThinkCenter M75 Q Generation 2. Let's start by exploring the hardware. Lenovo ThinkCenter M75 Q Generation 2 is a small form factor desktop PC powered with AMD CPU. My particular unit comes with Ryzen 5, but actually the motherboard supports up to Ryzen 7. There are options of this model with Ryzen 3 and even AMD Athlon. You can plug up to 64 GB of RAM. There are multiple connectors, both on the front and on the back. This is the front panel of the computer. I purchased my uh, M75Q Generation 2 a year and a half ago, so now is the time to finally remove the protective film from the power button. From left to right we have a headphone and microphone combo jack, which is 3.5 millimeters. We have um, USB 3.2 Generation 2, USB-C 3.2 Generation 1 and the mentioned power button. On the back side of the computer, from left to right, we have the uh, power connector. Unfortunately, it's not USB-C, but the old style of Lenovo brick connector. Next to it, we have display port. After that, we have USB 3.2 generation one. After that, an HDMI connector, another USB 3.2 generation one. Optionally, we can have um, a port on the top, which is either VGA or in my case, uh, display port. There are additionally two USB 2.0. Optionally, there is uh, another port which is not populated on my unit. Uh, for example, I can put there a serial connector. And finally, the last port on the far right is the Ethernet, which is RJ45, of course. You can also see the Wi Fi and Bluetooth antenna. The model and the generation are printed on the side of the case. The CPU in my M75. Q Generation 2 is AMD Ryzen 5. The exact model is 5600 GE. It has 6 cores and supports up to 12 threads. The base frequency is 3.4 GHz, but the maximum frequency is actually 4.4 GHz. You can connect up to 3 independent monitors to ThinkCenter M75Q Generation 2. There is an HDMI port and a display port. Optionally, there is an extra port. It could be either display port or VGA. In my case, it is a display port. So in total, you can have up to three monitors connected to this tiny computer. Let's have another look on the back side of the PC. I want to remind you that the display port is next to the power connector. After that, we have the USB um, connector and the HDMI. In my case, the optional connector is another display port. So although this is a tiny computer, thanks to the integrated AMD Radeon graphics, uh, it can work simultaneously with three different monitors. If you're curious, what is the AC to DC adapter that works with M75Q Generation 2? Here is a closer look. It outputs 20 volts DC and um, the total power is 65 watts. We already had a look at the connectors on the front and on the back of this mini PC, but I'm always curious what's inside. So let's tear down Lenovo ThinkCenter M75Q. This is not the first time that I'm doing a disassembly of this computer and unfortunately the quality of the screw on the back is not so good, so nowadays it's a bit hard to get rid of it. The design of the case is magnificent, it's just this big screw, so I'm using a screwdriver to remove it. After that, I'm gently sliding the uh, top cover to the front and lifting it up to completely remove it. This way we have access to the cooling fan of the CPU and the holder for the SATA drive. There's a small cable that connects the SATA drive to the motherboard, be careful with it. My next step was to remove the Wi-Fi antenna. After that, I rotated the whole mini PC and removed the metal backplate. The backside of the printed circuit board of the motherboard is very interesting if you are planning any upgrades. Here we have two sodium slots for RAM and also a M2 NVMe SSD. 
M75Q Generation 2 supports up to 64GB of DDR4 RAM. There are two SODIMM slots. SODIMM is the standard for RAM for laptops. My unit came with just 8GB RAM, which is not enough for today's standards, so I bought 32GB as an extra module and performed an upgrade, which I've covered in my previous video. Following a really smart recommendation from one of my YouTube viewers, I put the 32GB memory module to the first SODIMM slot because most of the input-output operations are happening through it. I moved the original 8GB to the second slot. In long term, probably the best idea is to buy another 32GB memory module of the same brand and use the dual-channel capabilities of the motherboard. On the same side of the motherboard is the M2 NVMe SSD. Here is a closer look at it. In my case, the disk type is 2280 and the capacity is just 256 gigabytes. However, you can upgrade it up to one terabyte. Moving on back to the front of the motherboard, you can see here the display port extension board that is connected to the motherboard and to one of the two optional ports available on M75Q generation 2. Here is also a closer look at the Wi-Fi card which is connected to the M2 dedicated slot and there is a cable that connects the Wi-Fi card to the antenna. Keep in mind that the M75Q generation 2 case is metal so the antenna is really important for having good Wi-Fi connectivity. One more thing, this is a combined card for both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Obviously, it's optional. However, there's something that's not optional and it's very important. This is the cooling system for the CPU. Ryzen CPUs can get hot and it's important to have a good cooling. This is a pretty decent 12 volt fan and it's relatively silent, especially in idle mode. However, of course, it gets noisy if you load the CPU up to 100%. An outstanding feature of Lenovo ThinkPad laptops and ThinkCenter computers, like this one, is the firmware. There are advanced features such as diagnostics which allow you to check the hardware and because this is firmware it works independently of your operating system. So you have access to the firmware features no matter if you're running Microsoft Windows or Linux. Immediately after turning on the computer, on the screen with the Lenovo logo, hit enter and you're gonna see this startup interrupt menu. There are several options, F1 to enter the BIOS setup utility, F10 to diagnose the hardware or F12 to choose a temporary startup uh, device. This is useful if you have a bootable USB stick and if you want to install, for example, a Linux distribution. However, in this case, I pressed F10 and I've entered Lenovo Diagnostics. Here, apart from checking the system information, we can run various tests for the storage, for the CPU, for the motherboard, for the RAM, for the display and the PCI Express. Here is a quick demonstration how the Lenovo Diagnostics helped me to test my RAM after performing an upgrade, which I've covered in my previous video. These type of hardware tests require some time, but thanks to the magic of video editing, I'll fast forward. At the end of the test, we get results. Although this time everything is fine with my computer, the Lenovo Diagnostics Firmware 2 might be useful if you are suspecting a hardware failure. We covered the hardware and the firmware, now let's talk about the software. Lenovo ThinkCenter M75Q Generation 2 has a built-in TPM20 a chip, which means that it's compatible with the latest versions of Windows 11. However, I'm a Linux user, so after buying this computer, which came with Windows, as you can see here the sticker, I wiped it out and installed Ubuntu Linux distribution. Initially, I've installed Ubuntu 22.04 and after that, I've upgraded to the next long-term support release, Ubuntu 24.04, which I'm running as of the moment. In April 2026, I'm planning to upgrade to the next long-term support release of Ubuntu. The computer works really well, I have no remarks and it works really stable under Linux. Let me show you my desktop environment. I haven't made any modifications. Most of the time I'm using this device as a headless unit and I'm logging in remotely over SSH. By default, Ubuntu comes with the GNOME desktop environment, which supports both Wayland and X11. Typically, I'm using 
Wayland, but for this recording uh, I switched to X11 because it works better with Simple Screen Recorder. From the information available from the settings application we can see that we have 40 gigabytes of RAM and a Ryzen 5 CPU, the exact model is 5600 GE. As you have seen during the teardown I have installed two drives, one NVMe drive and another SATA drive. So I've launched Gparted which is a popular open source application with graphical user interface for managing drives and you can see the file systems of each of the two drives. I also launched the terminal application in GNOME and I've typed uname space dash a which prints the Linux kernel version as of the moment I'm running Linux kernel 6.8. As I told you from the very beginning Lenovo Think Center M75Q Generation 2 is a very powerful tiny machine. So for a practical demonstration I decided to cross compile a Linux kernel for Raspberry Pi 5. I'm doing this through the Yocto project and Open Embedded. Probably if you're not a Linux developer this means nothing to you but think of it as a very professional way to build a custom Linux distribution for embedded devices. By the way if you're curious to learn more about this you can have a look at my course about getting started with the Yocto project and Open Embedded on Raspberry Pi 5. All videos are available on my YouTube channel. So on the left terminal window I'm running the bitbake command and this way I'm cross compiling a Linux kernel for Raspberry Pi 5 on this AMD machine. It is called cross compiling because Raspberry Pi is with 64 bit ARM CPU and the architecture of this M75Q is x86-64 also known as AMD64. This is the architecture of the AMD Ryzen 5 CPU. The purpose of this practical experiment is to monitor the load of the system and because of this I have opened another terminal and on the right I'm executing the top command so that I can see the CPU load and from time to time I'm running the sensors command so that I can observe how the CPU temperature is handling. During the cross compilation of the Raspberry Pi 5 kernel on this uh, M75 Q generation 2 CPU, the majority of the cores of the Ryzen 5 CPUs were loaded up to 100% and at that moment the temperature of the CPU rose up to 80 degrees. Of course at that time the fan was working to the maximum, it was a little bit noisy but not too noisy. At the end when the cross compilation was completed the CPU load was significantly uh, dropped and the CPU temperature dropped to about 50 degrees. So we can summarize that the AMD Ryzen 5 CPU in the M75Q generation 2 is uh, with temperature of about 80 degrees Celsius under heavy load which is I believe pretty good result. M75Q is a great PC and it has a lot of advantages. Obviously the first one is the tiny size but also it has a very solid metal case. You can keep it on your desk or you can even plug it behind your monitor. Another feature that I really think is a huge advantage is that you can easily disassemble it and upgrade it. I have already added an extra um, SATA drive and I also upgraded the RAM by adding an extra memory module. You can also very easily change the NVMe SSD. M75Q is a great tiny laptop and there are almost no disadvantages. Almost. Nowadays everyone is moving to USB-C. Unfortunately this is not the case for M75Q and its power supply which still relies on the old brick connector. There are some trade-offs because of the tiny size. For example, there is no PCI Express slot, which means that you cannot plug an external graphical card. So I would say that this tiny computer is not good for gaming. Another really minor thing is the quality of the screw on the back. I've already disassembled this computer on several occasions uh, using a screwdriver and um, this big screw um, worn off pretty quickly but this is a minor thing.
We have already discussed the advantages and the disadvantages, so let's summarize. Lenovo Think Center M75Q is a small form factor desktop PC with AMD CPU that supports up to Ryzen 7. The particular unit that I've reviewed in this video is with Ryzen 5. It also supports up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 uh, RAM and there is one slot for NVMe SSD and another slot for 2.5 inch SATA drive. My verdict is that Lenovo Think Center M75Q Generation 2 is a great tiny desktop computer and it's really powerful thanks to the AMD Ryzen CPU. I definitely recommend it for home or office use. Uh, recently I repurposed this tiny computer and uh, now I'm using it as a small build machine for my uh, custom Linux distributions that I built with the Yocto project and Open Embedded. And my plan is to use it for continuous integration and deployment for some hobby projects that I'm running in my spare time. So keep this in mind because this tiny machine can be actually useful even for DevOps. If you find this content useful, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and hit the like button. Stay tuned for new videos. See you soon.